Good evening. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, July 31st. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Jason Irvin of the 28th Ward. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum today. Uh, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. I'm Dartesia Pitts, a board member here at Can TV. This is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service by Can TV. We welcome your questions. We encourage you to call in and join in the discussion by dialing the number at th that you see at the bottom of the screen, 312-738-1060. And during the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many of your calls as we can on the air. Thank you again, of course, for joining us. Last time I had the last time you were here, I had the opportunity to interview you. So this is um, a pleasure to do that a second time. No, thank you for having me. I, I look forward to coming out and uh, basically fielding the questions from the residents and constituents in the city. Uh, a lot of times we don't get to go to everybody's door and we try to make ourselves available as much as possible at various events and venues. And this is just another uh, venue for me to have an opportunity to, to uh, converse with residents. So I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. And when I saw you last, you had just gotten sworn in maybe a couple of months before. Right. You appeared on the show. Yes. This is your first term. Yes, it is. How is it going with city uh, council? You know, I, I always uh, say that it's the same fight but a different round. Uh, we're consistently... Uh, advocating on the behalf of our residents and our communities. You know, you have 50 different thoughts sometimes. Some of them we do line up on, some of them we do not. Uh, but it's still incumbent upon all the men to advocate the interests of their community. That's something I will continue to do and strive to do every day that uh, that I'm an alderman. I've done it for years before being an alderman, and I will continue to do it in my role as alderman of the 28th Ward. Yes. Um, I'm going to show the audience the um address and also your information you have a great website as well um, www.aldermanirvin.com and you have the ward map here as well yes that's the uh, ward map that you're looking at that's the configuration I was elected under um, this and then we're also transitioning to newer boundaries uh, which we also I'm sure we have a copy of that to show the residents as well uh, which has some changes I still represent communities of Austin uh, East West Garfield Park uh, North Lawndale uh, Little Village and Pilsen but uh, we've added the communities in the near west area of, of University Village the near west side and a portion of the Illinois Medical District so we've had some changes in the boundaries, but we're still a predominantly African-American ward. Uh, however, we have added some uh, a little different flair and we've become a little more diverse uh, as the map has, ha as you've just had up, has shown. So. OK. So and that change was in effect, effect um, I believe, 2015. Yeah, when we went to the polls the last time around, everyone got the new voter registration cards and we've been, you know, actively servicing. Uh, new constituents as well as old constituents uh, we, we we cannot just you know just drop off uh, at points we do direct them to the the new officials in their wards and the areas but if something that that still hasn't been handled we still continue to service that stuff as well okay well oh we have a caller already I love it continue to call in good good evening caller hello I'm Bernie Scott and I live in a 28 ward and we and the whole block uh, out of garbage dumpsters. We were wanting to know if he could help us to get some. Your the whole block is out out of garbage. What happens to all yeah, the garbage cans? Some of the uh, homeless people stole them all. Oh, stole them all. Where what block is this, ma'am? This is twenty seven thirty five West Fifteenth Place. The whole block from California back to Washington. In the 2700 block of 16th Place or 16th Street? 15th Place. Oh, 15th it's Place. 15th. Oh, okay. You had a daycare, right? You had the daycare. Is that, you're the lady with the daycare facility? I'm not in the daycare facility. Okay. That's I, up on Ogden. Okay, no, the a lady has a home daycare close by. Oh, you're talking about Miss Susie. Yeah, she's down the street from me. Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, uh. Uh, they she's written that down and uh, I'll, I'll get that turned in in the I've morning and get that turned around for, for you. Some and I haven't got many yet. Okay, well that's something uh, we should be able to resolve for you at your address to get some cans to you. Generally, what happens is the um, the city is taking a while to get those cans out, but what we what we generally do 
uh, will have someone bring you some used cans so that you do have a place to put your garbage until the new cans arrive because uh, we're experiencing, and this is just something that we actually discussed today, the uh, the lengthier times of service that in many cases our residents are, are hearing, and then that coupled today with the uh, financial outlook for the city uh, doesn't bode well for that. But again, we still want to make sure that you have something to put your garbage in and uh, we'll make sure that you get a, you get a, you need how many receptacles, two or three? I need about two. You need two. two. Okay. All right. Well, she's written that down for me and I will make sure that you get that in the next couple of days. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. And now you also uh, coming to our, uh, our senior picnics coming up this Saturday. So I heard it was Saturday, but I was kind of disgusted because when they got, they had the TIF fund and I went to that and I've been going every year to get some outside work done in my house and they always do other things with the money so well you know the tiff is part of the neighborhood improvement program in many cases ends up being a lottery and um you know because the midwest tiff and i believe you live in the midwest tiff uh the mm -hmm. midwest tiff is one of the largest tiffs in a, that has residential properties and the mm -hmm. amount of money that's given and, and i actually have a list uh of all of the people that have received funding as where well after the lottery was performed and uh, I don't know if you were on the wait list or uh, it sounds like you didn't get the, the first list, but on the wait list. But that's something that myself, Alderman Chandler, Alderman Burnett will continue to do on an annual basis as the funds are available. Uh, the Midwest TIF, like I said, is one of the larger TIFs uh, in the city of Chicago. And it also we've uh, also went to the state legislature to have it to have it reauthorized for some additional time so we can uh, we can get additional benefit out of the TIF as well as pro provide stuff. Uh, in the communities for residents. And just as an example, when we repaved all that, that raggedy street over there on Washtenaw, that mm. was actually TIF money that we used to repave Washtenaw between Ogden all the way down to 19th Street. So we are doing things with the TIF money. It may not come back to you in a direct form at your home personally, but there are things that we're doing in the community with this money to help improve the quality of life for residents in the in the ward. Oh, okay then. Thank you. All right, very well. Dumpsters, All right, we're gonna get the dumpsters. I know that's that, that's more important than anything. Yeah, that's for rodent control. All right. Oh, okay then. Thank you for calling though. That was um, that's great when you can um, dialogue with the um, the constituents like that. No, yeah, and, and I appreciate that because access. a lot of times you know people call three one one, and uh, three one one takes in information. And a lot of times, uh, you know, they have to get to it when they when they get to it. And so a lot of times we get we receive those calls mm -hmm. and, it, you know, it's incumbent upon us to try to expedite services where we mm -hmm. can or make a way, you know, and a lot of times out of no way, you know, we're asked to make a way and, and, and we have to do that to help our constituents because that minor issue of the lack of a garbage receptacle mm -hmm. can turn into a huge issue for the area with rodents and other types of vermin right. and people and and just it, it can become a problem so if we can nip this in the bud for her that will save us a lot on the back end okay well thank you callers if you're just tuning in i am sitting in the studio with alderman jason irvin from the 28th ward and this is political forum so if you would like to engage in the conversation Give us a call, 312-738-1060. So, I thought we had another caller. So, there's a senior picnic on Saturday, I heard you tell. Yes, uh, we have our annual uh, back-to-school uh, parade and picnic uh, on the first Saturday of the year. It's ironic. Uh, it always coincided. Most of the schools in the ward were on what they called Schedule E last year, and they started that first Monday in August. Now, everybody's been shifted to the end of August, but we had already set up our date uh, for the back to school parade and picnic on the first Saturday. Okay. And we've continued with that date. Again, we have, we invite all of our seniors out uh, to have a, just a great day with uh, music, fun, bingo. Mm -hmm. We have jumping jacks for the kids. We give out school supplies. We, it's just an overall good day uh, that we have. This year, we're gonna be doing it at Marshall Campus Park. Uh, brand new park. You talk about, uh, you know, talk about some uh, TIF money in the community. Um, that park and the work that was done at that school 
uh, was done uh, primarily with the use of TIF funds right at Marshall High School in the heart of the East Garfield Park community as well as the heart of the 28th Ward. So um, TIF dollars do actually uh, work and have been working on behalf of residents. It's just not they may not have that direct connection, meaning that something directly came back to them. But there, there are plenty of things that we're doing in the 28th Ward trying to utilize TIF funds in a positive manner to uh, make life better for the constituents. All right, we have another caller. Hi, caller. Yes, good evening. Uh, Alderman, I have a question concerning the free Sunday parking. I know that some business owners say that uh, free parking on Sundays can hamper business because local residents uh, park there in those spots instead of uh, potential customers. So I just want to see what's, uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, my thoughts are in, in different business areas. For example, uh, in, in the 28th Ward, I have three uh, predominant business areas, one along the Madison and Pulaski Corridor, the other along Cermak, and the final one along Taylor Street. So I've asked each of those independent associations what their thoughts were as it relates to Sunday parking. Uh, right now, I have one that say that they want it, and I have two that have not decided. So the ones that want it, we have to, of course, we don't have to do anything. But the two that are still deciding, if, if they feel the need to reinstall the Sunday parking at the business areas, uh, I think that would be in the best interest of all concerned. Because, again, the object to have thriving retail in any area is for jobs and it's for a neighborhood uh, you know, a neighborhood purpose that we will evaluate those and then bring them forward if it needs to be changed. Thanks for the question, caller. So um, everybody should definitely come out and hang out at the picnic that's coming up, which is great. Um, you have a lot of infrastructure development going on. I heard you talking about the Washtenaw yes. pavement and other different um, development that's going on. You want to tell the audience more about that? Yeah, we've we've tried to use the, the funds. Uh, every ward we re receives menu allocation and funds, um, but uh, it, given the size of our ward, if we only had the $1.3 million to use uh, in the ward, given our size, we would not be able to accomplish much. So we look to other uh, funding sources, be it the TIF funds, be it through our state reps and state senators, for additional funding to help with the infrastructure in our community. That coupled with the uh, water changes and a lot of our infrastructure has aged. So we've been looking at mixer, mixtures of funding to help the ward improve the infrastructure. So TIF has been used in a lot of cases. We've taken TIF money and used it with water money to do road projects. We've taken TIF money and menu money to work together to make some things happen. So we just want to continue to build our community. Last year, we did over 60 blocks of residential street resurfacing. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we're on tap to do about 40 blocks. So we want to continue uh, just building the infrastructure in our community. Okay. We have another caller. Thank you for calling in. Who is this? Hi. Um, I, I have a quick question. Um, the school closings have uh, really bothered me, and I'm just curious. Uh, are we setting up um, more after-school programs to counter it, uh, as well as tutor and uh, mentor programs? Uh, in, in our community, uh, I, I've had an opportunity to meet with some of the principals that have been affected. Uh, we did have a large number of closings in the, in, in the ward. We started out with just about every school in the community being on the chopping block to ultimately end up with uh, three uh, three closures, one consolidation. I'm sorry, four closures and one consolidation and one that was we were able to save from, from closure and one that we fortunately were able to get consolidated and so the kids didn't necessarily have to leave the building. Um, after school programming and safety has been a big concern uh, for me through, throughout this whole process. Um, I'm a firm believer that if we keep kids engaged either in school or out of school activities, uh, they're less likely to end up in trouble, to have other serious issues that come about them because they're in a controlled environment with adults and people that are looking out for their well-being. So as part of this process, uh, additional resources have been allocated for after-school programming as well as safety-related uh, programming such as safe passages and other types of programming for children and after what we call after school hours. And even though these activities sometimes occur at the school, um, these are still uh, good programs that we would like to see. The other side of this is the mental health component uh, that we're also looking at because a lot of our children, uh, we can do great things with the children, but they may go to an environment at home that may not be very stable. So as part of that component, the mental health, the social work aspect of this, we're also looking at, at ways to engage parents better 
as it relates to uh, being more involved with the children. Um, I have a great example at Spencer Elementary School with uh, Dr. Sean Jackson and the Parent University that they have implemented, and, and we've just seen that school grow by leaps and bounds. And that's something that I would like to replicate, not only in my ward, but I think would be beneficial for the entire city to take a look at what, he's, what he has done at Spencer to make that school a better place. Well, we have another caller. All right. Hi, caller. What's your question? Hi, um, Alderman Irvin. I just want to say, firstly, you know, I think it's wonderful that you are um, not only an elected official, but also a product of the public school system, you know, which is proof that public education works. But sort of on the heels of the last question, I had concerns about the funding. I mean, even the schools that are not closing are facing huge gaps. I know that there's been a lot of talk about going into the DePaul University TIF and taking that $55 million and allocating that towards schools to close some of these gaps. I wanted to know how likely you think it is that the city is going to release that money, and if that is not an option, what are some other viable ways we can fund public education without having to cut teachers and classes and programs? Um, in my opinion, the education in general in the state of Illinois has a revenue issue. Um, the per-pupil funding that we're looking at today coming for the state in general state aid is at its lowest point ever on a on a percentage basis the state really has an obligation to educate the children it's a constitutional obligation uh, that is in the state of Illinois Constitution and until we get better funding from the state and better funding uh, in other sources we will continue to have this challenge uh, many of us looked at our property tax bills we got uh, last month and that were that are actually due on tomorrow to see that in many cases they're, they're, they have increased. And the primary areas they have increased in has been in, in education. An average property tax bill in the city of Chicago, 50-some percent of that money is for, for the schools. And they've been levying their max every year for the past couple of years. So we're doing on the revenue side trying to bring as much as we can locally to the pot. Uh, I still I firmly believe that the state must meet its uh, obligation and release some of us from the burden that everyone is having to shoulder. And these things are just are domino effects. These same issues that come across as far as after school programming and arts education, you know, art to me is not an option. Music is, is not an option because when we went to school, we didn't have to make a decision between art or music or, you know, other things that we're asking these principals to make today. So when we look at this, uh, we really need to look at more equitable funding for schools, especially the Chicago public schools. And also with the pension obligation issue that has not only affected the state of Illinois, it's also affecting the city of Chicago. And just to think about this, uh, if, the, if nothing changes in the current state, uh, we'll be looking at uh, an astronomical increase in property taxes from the city of Chicago to cover pension obligations. And again, these are this is, you know, stuff that that, that really is intangible that I that we can't point to to say we raise your taxes 80, 90 percent to pay so for something that you can't you feel you don't get a benefit from. So that's a that's a uh, that's a tough conversation and that's tough for us to take a look at. But again, we firmly believe that the state needs to come up with a better revenue source for education, not only for the citizens in Chicago, but statewide. OK, we have a um, question for, from a caller for the alderman. And yes. of course, this is one of the uh, just like the school funding and the, the school closings. It's about gun violence, yes. and the caller wants to know what steps are you taking to fight gun violence in your um, ward? Um, <coughs> gun violence in the, in the 28th Ward, we've had some uh, single events that have given us a really uh, a bad uh, hit. We had, uh, you know, seven individuals shot, one individual killed at one location at uh, Florida and Francisco about a little over a month ago. Uh, what we've been doing is really trying to work with people. Gun violence is a symptom to a much larger problem. And what we've uh, been looking to do is get to people's root cause issues. Many cases we're finding that it's joblessness and lack of education and then the breakdown schools, right? in, the, in the family structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've instituted a program. I, in, that, in that specific incident in that area, uh, we've uh, called the community together. 
work with residents and I sat down with them to ask them what they thought they felt was needed to help remedy some of the situations that were causing the problems. So we're working with the Department of Family and Support Services on social service components for residents. We're working with the Illinois Department of Employment Security for, for jobs. We're working with uh, the city colleges for GEDs. And so we're trying to give people avenues to uh, change their lives and move in a positive direction. And we're also working with law enforcement to work with those who choose not to take the path that these things that are being offered to them. So this this component and these strategies have is, is multi multi-faced. And again, I think the real component key is to find out what the true issues are in that particular community that is driving these youngsters out here with this excessive killing and the excessive violence. We have another caller. Hi, Hi. Uh, I'm going to be moving into a new house and I'm just, I am realize that I'm kind of not really aware on how to tell if there was any major issues like that my landlord should take care of. Is there any, do you have any resources I could go to or if I find issues with my house that I'm moving into, can I come talk to my alderman or... Well, um, as far as uh, a, a new home or a place that you're moving into, um, I would I would suggest, especially if you're purchasing a home, to have the home inspected uh, by by a licensed home inspector that can then give you a a listing of issues that may be a problem in that particular uh, per property that you're purchasing. If you're renting a property. Um, you can always uh, always check with the Department of Buildings to see if there's been any issues previously at the building or if there's been any uh, current complaints that are uh, have been lodged against the building. And also, you know, the best thing to do is potentially talk with neighbors or just make a physical inspection of what's going on in the area or at the on the property itself. All right. We were talking prior to the show about one of the initiatives that you are um, working on within City Camp um, Council, and is the Fly Dump Reward. Can yes, you tell uh, the audience about that. Yeah, we've we've experienced a large number of fly dumps, and we historically have experienced these issues, and these predate myself as alderman in the 28th Ward. But in a lot of areas where you have vacant properties uh, on the south and west sides and other communities, people will just come and dump. Uh, various debris, construction debris, garbage, you name it, they will just dump it. And in fact, uh, the irony of this is that on yesterday, uh, I received a call from a resident that someone was actually stealing brick pavers out of their alley. Um, you know, and you come outside and you don't have an alley. That's a, that's a problem. So uh, the fly dumping uh, reward that we, that we put in place, basically, if you can help us uh, with information that will convict someone for fly dumping, uh, we will give a $100 reward. So if you get this information, you call 311. The callers will, the call taker will ask you some questions. And again, as you can't be anonymous, but you can pass the information along. And if the conviction results, there'll be a $100 reward for you. All right. Again, Alderman Irvin, it's always a pleasure. You are doing great things in your community. I am on your list, so I see um, via emails all the great things that you're doing from trying to get jobs for the community to develop the community. Um, and I thank you, and I'm not even in the 28th Ward. But well, we have to change that. You have to have to move into <laughs> the community. And uh, But, again, I, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to you know hear the pulse of what people are thinking. And again, I think it's a great opportunity to come out and, I, and again, be glad to come back whenever you ask. All right. Well, you have been watching Political Forum. I'm your host, Artesia Pitts. We've had the honor of having Alderman Jason Irvin in the studio. Tune in next week for another Political Forum, 7 o'clock. Have a great evening. Thank you.